Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with a full case of 2022 Topps Chrome Ben Baller 12 box pick your team number nine from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Big thanks to, here's the printout, hot off the presses. Big thanks to this group for making it happen straight up, no filler. On the first of the month, pick your team number nine. We got Rafael with the Dodgers. Got my Dodgers. Last spot, Mojo. There's everybody else. Thanks, everybody. Pr appreciate you. Pr appreciate you. And appreciate you. I she ate you. All the eight yous. For you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Just take Ben Baller out of my inventory here. Not too many left. We're flying through these cases. Especially the personal break side. So we'll get into them before they are gone. All right, let's roll. Doing all 12 boxes. Ben Baller, of course, part of the music industry. Discovered by Dr. Dre in the early 90s. Became a jeweler to the stars. Athletes and artists. And now I think he... Getting into, he's on the amateur golf circuit, apparently pretty decent in golf, LA guy. Golden, what's going on? Last chance for, is that it? Is, is the last case the group break case? Wow. Well, get it done, ladies and gentlemen. Five spots left in tops. Dynasty Formula One. Only one card per box, but I mean, you know the quality of Dynasty Baseball. I mean, if you get randomized the right guy. And we're doing five boxes. And with the, the NASCAR, NASCAR, NASCAR season, and with the F1 season around the corner, this, this racing season is, is in the air. And uh, F1 is back, and um, they're back in Vegas for the first time in ages. Correct. We will be randomizing those, Golden. Um, any drivers not on the list will be randomized in one lot. But I think we got our base. I don't think I don't think there's going to be more than more than one principal card in a in a single break, right? All right, box one of 12, good luck. Ryan hasn't seen this, pro Ryan uh, Harold, we got two Ryans in this chat now, hasn't seen it yet, it's pretty nice. There's Brian Reynolds to 99 for Steven and the Pirates, and there's uh, Nolan Arenado for the Cardinals, that'll be for John and the Redbirds. I think the design last year this is the second year Ben Baller is doing this. I feel like the design last year was a little was a little too busy. But I think the design's a lot cleaner in 2022. There's Salvador Perez to 15. That'll be for DY and the Royals. You can tell if they're numbered because usually it'll just be like a little black trim right there. I do love that riding low insert. 
And there's Edward Cabrera to 75 for the fish. That'll be Chris and the Marlins. But if those are different colors on that riding low insert, then they'll they'll usually be they'll be numbered. And we'll do an autograph and a rookie card. There's actually not a lot of autos in this, but we'll do a recap of some of the key cards at the end. Tristan with the Tampa Bay Rays. We got Logan Gilbert to 99 and another Wander Franco. Logan Gilbert for Seattle. That'll be for Daniel, Daniel Lewis. Are Julio Torque and Witt short prints like in... I don't think so. I feel like they're relatively... I feel like they're relatively plentiful. I mean, there's not like there's not one a box, but I feel like we do get a decent stack of those by the end of the break. So I think we're mainly looking for parallels of those guys. Here's Aaron Ashby to 50. Juan Soto die cut. The die cuts look pretty sharp too. Oh, they are short prints. Okay. Fair enough. Thanks, guys. Their base cards are short prints. All right. So we got three, three people confirming. So there's your, see, crowdsource information. World Baseball Classic is pretty soon. Are you guys not getting Alan Ginter Chrome? I'm guessing too many cards. Alas, Brandon, you have guessed wrong. When does that come out? I have no idea. We get everything, man. We get everything. We, we got to we got to keep up with our with our buying with our allocations all that stuff we got to get everything Zach short out of five yes five out of five it came out today no uh, maybe we're not selling it on the website I'm sure we got it though maybe it's personal break it's on the personal break channel there's Zach short five out of five Steven and the Tigers Steven all aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo woo. How short is Zach short? Not that short. It's 5'10. 180. Maybe we're not doing it for YouTube. But we did get it though.
Oh, okay. Well, there's, there's, there it is. Shipment was delayed for Jaspies. Joey Votto going to James via Teddy Jaspie from earlier today. There's Jorge Soler to 50. That makes sense. Yeah, but we get everything, Brandon. Everything that... Everything. Thing that Tops and Panini makes of the major sports, baseball, football, basketball, I don't think there's a single product that we pass on for those sports and for those companies. Like there might be some major league soccer stuff that we're not getting cases of, you know, maybe stuff like that. Maybe we're not getting all, maybe we're not getting like every Bundesliga soccer case or something like that. But for baseball, all that stuff, we're, we're usually getting everything. Now, whether it ends up on YouTube or if it's store only or if it's a, a personal break product, that's, that depends from product to product. But in terms of getting it, we usually could get everything. There's Wander Franco die cut for Tristan. Brandon Crawford to 99. For my rivals, the Giants, Chris Parent. Ronald Acuna Jr. to 75 die cut for the Braves. That'll be for Marcus Lindsay. And Luis Gill to 75 for the Bronx Bombers. That'll be for Colin. Another box. Distributors need to be using drones. Yeah, I don't know if the delay was because there was just too much traffic. I don't know if I don't know if it was that kind of delay. To me it sounds like a To me it sounds like a Hey, where were the uh, X amount of cases for Jaspers? We got to send those out. Well, I don't know, we don't have them. What do you mean we don't have them? Or maybe it was UPS or FedEx. In that case, maybe they should use them. Would that make it any faster? Are we prepared for a world in which we see things flying around and dropping things off? Slowed everything down. Hmm. Yeah, in adverse weather, would drones still be operating? Can drones? Can shipping type drones still deliver in inclement weather? What is the weather rating on the? I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a droner. Any any drone drone peeps out there? Share your knowledge of drones. can't wait for because uh, it'll definitely be I, I think drone drone technology is great I think it's fun there's Aaron Ashby to 25 and delivery via drone I think will be pretty cool but there's got to be sort of a, a, a growing pains period right and I know they're testing that stuff all the time but I feel like you know until they're out in full force by numbers You know, like, 
and mass, there's going to be some issues, right? We're going to see... You think people will shoot him down? That will be kind of funny. Just for funsies? There's Emmanuel Rivera to 99. But won't they fly high enough where you where where you can't shoot it down? I guess they have to descend at some point. But if they dis the, if they make the descent from directly over your house and kind of go straight down, instead of a sloping, right? It'll be like you'll it'll be like I know who shot it down. It's my neighbor. It'll be close enough. Here's Joe Adele for the Angels. That'll be for Tristan. And Longo for the Giants, I'll be for Chris Parent. I feel like they'll be like, yeah, it was Bob next door. It was this kid next door who shot that down. So they have to fly those correctly. I, I think it's going to be hilarious when there's like ring videos, those ring door, not, door doorbell videos that are going to take of a drone like crashing into the side of your house or something like that smashing through a window you know can, can you imagine the first person where the drone hovers too long or or someone doesn't stand clear of a drone dropping off a package and they stick their hand in the propellers the first drone that fails over traffic smashes into a car, causes a car accident. Here's Zach Bop for Chris Parent. Yeah, something tells me that they're not going to send a $30,000 case of Transcendent on a drone. Those are pretty heavy, too. I think there's got to be weight limits. Right, uh, noise pollution's a thing. There's going to be regulations where some cities are going to be like, there are, well, some cities will probably ban drone delivery, first off. Second off, yeah, think of the, if you're in a smaller town or something like that, and you've got a dozen drones delivering things every day. Can get pretty loud. Hmm. Uh, that would put the fast back into fast food, Trady. I guess if fast food started uh, bringing your McDonald's deliveries. I have no idea when Transcendent is coming out. Don't you love when you take off from John Wayne they cut the cut out the engines over Orange County? Do they do that? I flew out of uh, I flew out of John Wayne recently, or last fall, and they didn't do that. I think they fly. I think to avoid that, Terry. You know what they do nowadays? They uh, they fly out. They take off over the ocean, and then they then they gain altitude over the ocean, spin around, and then go over. So they don't directly take off over Orange County. Or LAX, for that matter. Yeah, I have. Uh, I have seen. Uh, I have seen delivery robots. Not really a delivery robot, but it's really a delivery 
box. Here's Bryson Stott. But there's a program in Santa Monica called Coco, I believe. And they're, uh, I'll drop the link in the chat. They're pretty much like, it's like a, a cute pink box on four wheels with like a little flag on it and then goes around. Sometimes they go around in teams. There's four out of 50, Bryson Stott, uh, Daniel Lewis and the Phillies. Ooh, we're down to four on that dynasty. Let's fill that up. That could be, we still have a ways to go in this break, but that could be our, our very next break right after this one. Juan Soto to 75. That'll be for Ryan and the Nationals. And there's Bobby Witt Jr. Die cut to 99. DY and the Royals. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, we, we don't want that happening until Logan is, uh, is retired from the United States Postal Service. Salvador Perez and Ryden Low Bobby Witt Jr. Yeah, we'll look. yeah, let's. I'd be surprised if there was enough of that delivery, uh, enough drone delivery, Logan, in the next fifteen years that would put a that would put a dent in your hours. How do they keep people messing with them or sitting inside? The, the box, the top of the box is locked. So that stops the messing around pretty quickly. And I think they're kind of heavy enough where like you can't really pick them up. <laughs> I mean, I guess you could, but I think they all have GPS stuff on it. So you can't even seal the thing itself. And I think it's just food. And I think they only do food and grocery deliveries. And I, you know, I mean, there's, we don't have as much jerks in LA as you think they are. <laughs> there are. Like no one really cares. They're like, oh, there it goes. It's Corey Seager to 50. What's up, Oliver? It says no, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Eloy Jimenez, White Sox, Joe Christian. I actually don't know what service delivers. I think it's mostly food, right? But I don't know. I, mean, I need to find a restaurant that delivers with those little guys. All right, another box. A lot of Amazon lockers now keep everything locked up. Weren't they locked all the time? to all use Amazon lockers. So how how does that work, Logan? Do you do you get a if if that's on your route, do you get like the code to open up all the things or do you have to ask someone every day at the, at an apartment complex? Ryan only uses armed guards to have stuff delivered to him. Nice. I imagine uh, briefcases with uh, with handcuffs on it. <laughs> oh, you have your own code that you can punch into. Got it. A letter carrier code. Is it different for every building or is there like one master code that could unlock everything? For like an Amazon bonanza for, for a master thief. I would imagine they're different at every location. Oh, 
right. One different for every building. Got it. What do you do, Lo? Do you do you keep a list somewhere, or did are you a savant? Can you mem memorize all those codes, or do you have a list that could fall into the wrong hands, like a Mission Impossible or James Bond movie? Uh, I don't know if they have autos on the on on the checklist, Ryan. Also. Autos few and far between. We're, we're not really not looking for the uh, for her autos here. I think there may be two or three autos um, in like the entire case. I wouldn't be holding my breath for autographs. Now, if you're low numbered parallels, that's what we want to see. It's Kirilov to seventy five. Oh, they both have autos. Right. Well, let's see if we can find some more autos. I did see that Jason Hayward homer today. The new swing looks promising. It does. There's Otani to 50. Another one. Are you, are you sure these are short print? It's like our fourth Wander Franco out of six, out of five boxes. Three out of five? I guess maybe shorter than some of the others. Uh, Tristan and the Rays. Tristan also gets the Otani. Another Bobby Wood Jr. die cut. And Spencer Torkelson green to 99, the 1987 design. Oh, Franco and Cruz are not short printed. Got it. Been trying to get a Wander Flawless out of a mint. Those are expensive. Yeah. They are. Bobby Witt Jr. die cut. Jose Abreu Green to 99. Stephen Carney, by the way, has a Tigers. He gets that Torkelson. Yeah, me. I mean, I know Jason Hayward's glove is still there. That I can still rely on. It's the bat, right? But if he can, if he can start hitting closer to what he was able to do back in the day, that Torkelson's numbered. Then yeah, I'd, I'd pop him in center field. Forty-five out of seventy-five, Stephen and the Tigers. Joe Ryan to ten. Yeah, I, I don't, Rex, I think they signed him to like a minor league deal. So I think expectations, the bar is very low for Jason Hayward. But if he can be, his glove is still effective. If he, if he can be decent with the bat, or yeah, at least better than Cody Bellinger with the bat, then I think that would be, I think that would be nice then I think he might be utilized a lot more. Wait, so Oliver, who are they playing at third? Because I saw an article today that said Miguel Vargas was being groomed for second base. There's Urias for the Dodgers. That's for Rafael. Is Max Muncy playing third then? Muncie's at third, okay. I don't mind Max at third. I know they did, but they... Does that mean they can't move him up until... Opening day next year? It's a one year deal, but those aren't, I don't think nothing's really guaranteed. They can just release him at any time or designate him for assignment or send him to the minors and he probably won't go to the minors. I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I don't mind. I know that everyone's saying, oh, the Dodgers need to get a shortstop. Let's get Didi Gregorius. Let's get so-and-so. Let's get so-and-so. 
I don't mind Miguel Rojas and his, you know, above average glove at shortstop. I know he's not going to help much with the bat, but I don't mind going a little more, more defensive, generate runs in different ways. But then I heard the revival of the Willie Ademis trade. I know the Dodgers were looking at Willie Ademis last, uh, over the offseason. Now, do you think the Dodgers maybe maybe go for Willie Ademis? Maybe go for maybe they go for Willie Ademis plus Corbin Burns. Corbin Burns probably gonna test free agency this year, or is he under? Does he have one more year of arbitration? I forget. Yeah, RIP Gavin Lux. He's out for the year. Uh, and also, honest question, when, when do I set fire to Panini Warehouse? Because 15... Well, I would start with checking with Chase Young, Ryan, before you set fire to Panini's warehouses. Have you seen your outstanding redemptions appear live on like eBay and places like that? If so, then yeah. And then you got to talk to Panini about that. But most times, you should probably track down Chase Young. And be like, yo, why are you not signing your cards? Turn them in. <laughs> That's true. You do have a contract with Panini, but, but Panini has a contract with Chase Young. So there's like a waterfall effect there. So why not go to the source? And be like, yo, Chase. I mean, does does he have a stack of cards sitting on his dinner table like that he hasn't signed yet? Yeah, out of out of NT and flawless mostly. Here's Trout to ninety nine, nice die cut for Tristan. But yeah, Willie, uh, Corbin Burns went through that arbitration, lost the arbitration, which I feel like doesn't happen too often, but he did. I don't think he's too thrilled about that, and it doesn't seem like. The, the Brewers were willing to, to pay him or extend him anytime soon. Jed Lowry to 99. But if he's unsettled, you know, maybe the Dodgers. Who would, who would, who would you give up, Oliver? And Terry, as well. I think Terry was in, enamored with Ademis. Um, who would you give up? for Willie Ademis and Corbin Burns, knowing that I think both are on expiring deals. And maybe one more arbitration year for Corbin Burns, maybe. Maybe some sort of restricted free agency. There's Josiah Gray to 50. Oh, so I think I forgot Rex's question. Uh, I mean, is there like, can they move him? Yes. If, if they add him to like the opening day roster, Rex, if they add Jason Hayward to the opening day roster on a minor league deal, they'll have to work out a major league deal. So they'll, they'll, just, they'll just rip up the minor league contract. And, and sign him to a major league deal, which is, um, which then puts you officially on the roster. So that takes up a 40-man roster spot, blah, 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 blah. Is Hyunjin Rue to 75? Bobby Dalbeck to 99. It'll be for Boston, it'll be for Steven. Ryan says give up all the prospects? Saying you have maybe have like a three year window to win and then spend to rebuild? If the Do I don't know if that's the Dodgers style. I feel like they want to they want to build they want to try to build longer windows. But I mean, prospects are there for a reason. You know, a lot of times you can overvalue a prospect just because you just haven't seen him play. But Pagas, maybe? 
Pies? Bush and Outman. I'd move Bush and Out. I, yeah, I'd move Michael Bush and James Outman for if that turns into Willie Ademis and Corbin Burns for the short term. You know they're gonna they're gonna ask for Bobby Miller though. And like Diego Cartaya or something like that. To which the Dodgers will laugh in their faces. Wait, who are you talking about, Rex? Rex says, I'd be willing to bet they'd let him work on everything for the season, maybe use him for his arm towards the playoffs. Right? Ryan's a Mets fan. He doesn't know what not having a closer is like. Well, it's not like the Mets closer was homegrown, right? And was there forever. Right, the Dodgers aren't going to do that for rentals. Chris will be, you're right. But Oh, Hayward. Yeah, I mean, it did... Uh, that the minor, league, the minor league deal for the veteran player... You know, falling on hard times is a little tricky. It's it all it'll all depend on what Ryan Howard wants. Ryan Howard, Jason Hayward, what Jason Hayward, Ryan Howard, someone else. It's what Jason Hayward wants. You know, is he willing to maybe take an assignment with the Dodgers and work on some stuff? Or if he has a good spring and if he's not on the roster, you know, will he be like, well, okay, can you just release me so some other team can pick me up? So that'll be interesting. Howard. Hayward, not Howard. Yeah, I do think they like that that veteran in the clubhouse in Hayward. He might get a job. He might get like the 25th or 26th spot on the roster just for that. J.D. Martinez is supposed to be sort of the sort of a veteran voice as well. And I think J.D. Martin, I don't know how he's doing this spring, but I know that he's reunited with his buddy Mookie Betts and his old uh, personal hitting coach, who's a coach on the Dodgers. So they're, they're together. Twenty-two out of fifty, Hyunjin Ryu for Toronto. That'll be for Ryan. Former Dodger. Justin Verlander, ninety to ninety nine. What's Ryan Howard up to? I feel like uh, there's Verlander for the Strohs. That's for Jose. I feel like they tried putting, was it MLB Network or was it ESPN? You know, Ryan Howard had made some appearances on some baseball shows. And I think he was kind of auditioning for an analyst role, but then I feel like I never saw him again. And all depends on the Dodgers really feel the moves can help them against the Padres. Right. I mean, I don't think they'd mind another arm like, like Corbin Burns in that rotation, though. With that guy, and Julio Urias, and Dustin May, and Syndergaard in the back. All right, Tristan, here's here's the base version of this. So we pulled Tristan the one of one version of this card. And I was imploring for him to start creating the rainbow. And so here's the, I'm sure you have some base versions already, but here's, it eh, looks pretty, could be a decent grade on this, but 
There's that, the one of one, so on and so forth. That would be awesome. Good luck with that project, Tristan. Keep us posted. Charlie Blackman to 99. Is it the Padres division to lose at this point? Not according to Vegas. Joe Christian with the Rockies. Charlie Blackman. 99. Vegas has still has the Dodgers at 96 and a half wins and the uh, Padres at 93 and a half wins. Charles, I did I did enjoy two halves of, a, uh, of two different donuts today <laughs> to make a whole. They were pretty good, thank you. Um. I think, uh, think Vegas is not in the business of losing money. But I, I think this is sort of, this is gonna, this, it's going to sound really, you know, but it's true. It's going to sound cocky, but it's true. Right, all were saying the same thing. The Dodgers were so good last year that they didn't have to do much. And everyone freaked out because they weren't really doing anything. But they haven't really, you, you know what I mean? Like, they're still really good. They're so good, even with them, quote unquote, doing nothing in the offseason, Vegas still has them at 96 and a half wins. I think that's like second best in the league. Houston is at 97 and a half. Braves are at 96 and a half. And the Dodgers are at 96 and a half. That's how good that team is. The only big player they really lost was Walker Bueller, you know, uh, due to injury, and Trey Turner in free agency. Look at Justin Turner's numbers in 2022. I love the guy, but it's not like he was, you know, MVP caliber or anything like that. You know? Well, Bauer has been out of the equation for a while, so I don't think he even factors in these win total numbers. Um, but uh, Trey Turner would be the big loss. Cody Bellinger, you're going to miss his glove. But that bat was a black hole in that lineup. Yeah, but I don't know. Relief pitchers are sort of like running backs. You know, where, where I feel like you can... And the Dodgers have been pretty good at finding like diamonds in the rough and getting those relief pitchers like, you know, finding some others. And Oliver's right. They're, this team will end up making moves by the trading deadline as well. But there's sort of an embarrassment of riches for, 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 for them. A lot of people will point to like wind share and they'll be like, oh, do you know the Dodgers lost the most wind share in, like, in the offseason? But yet they're still going to have them at 96 and a half wins. I mean, that's how good that team is. Uh, their margin of error is a lot bigger. There's Robbie Grossman to 99. Yeah, that's a good point too, Charles. Like, you know, there might even been some addition by subtraction there as well. Core talent is still there. And it'll be good to see what they have in the youngsters. Got a healthy Max Muncy. Out of 50, you know, you can see what Max Muncy can do. Right there, a 35 home run guy. So if we get a version of that guy back. That Max Muncy goes to Rafael and the Dodgers. Is 
Syndergaard hitting 95 on the gun. There's Jaron Duran, 75. And you know what? Let, let's put the pressure on Mookie Betts. You know? Like, everyone loves Mookie Betts. He's a great guy. Great ball player. But had a couple hot months last year. And then a couple really cold months the other parts of the year. So his counting stats look great by the end of the season. There's Wayno, by the way, going to uh, St. Louis, going to John. And here's Jaron Duran, 75. Stephen Carney. Let's see some... Uh, Let's see some more consistency out of this guy over the course of the whole season. Because there was a month and a half where it was like, there was a month and a half where it was like Mookie Betts MVP candidate, but then went ice cold for like a month and a half and then was heating up for a month and a half and that was pretty much the season after that. Did Mookie Dabonte? I haven't really been watching. I've been seeing some highlights here and there. Does Mookie look bigger? Oliver. It's Joey Votto to 25. James with the Reds. And Cole Calhoun for Joe and the Rangers. Some of you may be familiar with Driveline in Seattle. That, kind of that baseball lab <laughs> where a lot of pitchers go to to increase spin rate and blah, 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 all that sort of stuff. And they and Driveline is starting to work with hitters now over the last couple of years. I think CT3 was up there and has worked with those guys up there before. And I think more and more hitters are kind of kind of going there too. You know, one of the things that they that they said was like, "Hey, um, I think you're playing. We think you're playing. Our our data seems to suggest that I think you're playing like." 10 pounds underweight. So I think he bulked up a little bit. I don't know if he, he went... Uh, with the, the interviews that he said, it doesn't... He makes it seem like he didn't hit the weight room or anything like that. But that he just kind of, you know, stopped skipping like snacks. Like he's just kind of eating more. He's just getting some natural, natural weight some of natural weight up. I think he went vegan last year, which might have accounted for some some a little bit of weight loss. So let's see. Someone was suggesting yesterday, I don't know what you guys think about this, baseball fans. Someone was suggesting that Gavin Lux had gained too much weight and that contributed to his his uh his knee buckling under him. I don't know how much of that is medically true or if that's even been reported but someone seemed to suggest that i think gavin lux did did bulk up though could there be bulking up too much maybe i don't know not sure exactly how that acl works i feel like there's a lot of football players that are gavin lux's size and and bigger that don't have acl issues so maybe that acl was already a weak point But it was like an awkward step, wasn't it, Devin? I'm obviously not a doctor. I do play one on TV. So I've never done that either. That's also a lie. Biggest shock, Ryan saying, Dan Vogelbach lost 25 pounds, looked shockingly slim. And Pete also lost 10 plus pounds. I don't know. Is that a good thing? I feel like sometimes drastic weight loss, you know, then, you, then you're like... Then you feel like, oh, it feels different hitting the ball. Like, but yeah, I was gonna. That's right, Oliver. ACLs doing your ACL that is a little bit more rare in baseball. Yeah, that step was was a little awkward. Yeah, what is what's up with that? That's true. Vlad Jr. still raked after losing weight. Fair enough. Fair enough. Alonzo, Terry saying Alonzo will hit 50 home runs and still get no love in the hobby. Why do you think? Why do we think that is? I like Pete Alonzo. It seems like to, seems to be sort of an everyman kind of guy. People seem to like him. I think he showed up at a Topps event. That remember that million card rip party that we were at 
at chat. I wasn't there, but Jason and Nick were there and um, in Dallas a few years ago. And he was there. He came to the event and he had like he was like handing out t-shirts and saying hi to people and it's Tristan in the Rays, Austin Meadows. And he was like, you know, pretty good dude, was pretty into the hobby and you know, a lot sometimes it's you know, it all depends on the player, but some players just kinda of dog those kind of events. You know, they're they don't really get into it or they just kinda of go through the motions, but it seemed it seemed like he was actually having fun. Yeah, why is is is, is, is Pete Alonso just just kind of I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have that extra it factor. I mean, I feel like he's pretty energetic after hitting like home runs, not like Barry Sanders giving the giving the ball to to the ref after touchdowns. I don't know. Maybe maybe bigger personalities like Francisco Lindor. I guess Francisco Lindor has done some indeed.com commercials. Pete Alonso not doing commercials. Maybe he needs to do more commercials. Joe Christian with the Mets. But then again, maybe he doesn't want to be in commercials, and maybe that's why he's not a bigger personality in the hobby. Oh, because Alonso's on the Mets and nobody likes the Mets? Here's 40 out of 50. Julio Rodriguez riding low. Seattle, that's for Daniel. Oh, so like what? It's like Kawhi and the Clippers, best player on the second team in a city that gets no love, right? Yeah, I guess I guess you're right. Kawhi on the Clippers. Trout and Otani on the Angels. Pete Alonzo. Pete Alonzo on the Mets. Cam Thomas on the Nets. Maybe there is something to that. Yeah, Jose Abreu on the White Sox. That's true. I guess Toronto time do get hobby love. But man, imagine if they were on the Dodgers or the Yankees. Anybody on Sacramento? On the Sacramento Kings. Ralph saying Chauncey Bill's worst coach in the league. It's not even close. I thought Chauncey was on like GM track. Not head coaching track. I, maybe his talents are there. What, what, what makes you say that though, Ralph? Was there anything specific that happened tonight? So, Mark? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we got plenty of hits so far. Got a Julio Rodriguez, riding low insert, numbered card. Some fun die cuts, some Wander Francos. We got a Bryson Stott autograph earlier. A lot of this Ben Baller stuff is about the parallels. And we've been getting a lot of those. The usual stuff that we've seen in previous eight Ben Baller cases. No like train whistle hits though, nothing out of five and under. Not yet anyway, we still have a few boxes to go. 
DJ LeMayhew to 25 for the Yankees. Use the false loop to 99, Luke Williams. Luke Williams for the Phillies, that's for Daniel. And DJ LeMay here to 25. Dennis saying, but there's not much else on the West Coast and the other than the LA team. You love Seattle, but the North Pacific Northwest always forgotten. That's the classic East Coast bias. All your big media companies on the East Coast, they ESPNs and MLB networks, they all go to bed. You know, they're not breaking down the the late night Angels Mariners game on a Saturday night. But Red Sox Yankees. <laughs> that'll get that'll that'll get play on all the big sports networks until we want to put ice picks in our eyes. It's Christian Yelich to fifty and just the base riding low Julio Rodriguez. But this guy's starting to change things. All right, we got Juan Soto to 50, Ryan Harold in the Nationals, Christian Yelich for Joe Christian, and Joe Christian with Christian to 50. Cedric Mullins to 75. Dylan Carlson to 99. Is the Yankees Red Sox the biggest rivalry in sports? Hmm. I mean, it's up there, but is it the biggest? I feel like uh, the Scottish Premier League has Celtic versus Rangers. The inner city rival in Glasgow. Like, they kill each other over that. That might be the biggest rivalry in sports. Yeah, Celtic Rangers. I mean, Madrid-Barcelona is still tame compared to, to Celtic Rangers. But in American sports, I feel like I feel like Dodgers Giants is is an underrated rivalry. But I think the Dodgers or the Giants haven't been haven't been good at the same time. You know what I mean? When the Giants were good, the Dodgers weren't very good, and when the Dodgers have been good, the Giants haven't been very good, except for that one season. Uh, Two years ago. But yeah, Red Sox Yankees is still pretty intense. Lakers Celtics, I think, is intense. I mean, those N NFC East rivalries are pretty strong too. Philadelphia Dallas. If the Bears were better, I feel like that would be that would be such a fun rivalry to watch as a neutral, right? Bears Packers. But Eagles Cowboys, I feel like that's still pretty contentious. Duke UNC, that's a good one. Yeah, Cowboys Eagles specifically. Alabama versus the whole SEC. <laughs> Alabama Georgia? No. That's not... What are some of the big college rivalries? I guess USC UCLA would be better if well maybe in basketball that might be good. Not in football though. 
I guess all those big college football rivalries are have a lot of history. Or I guess used to have a lot of history before. Now everything's going to get reshuffled. I don't think USC's going to play Notre Dame anymore, right? After they move out of the Pac-12. I'm not, I'm, I don't know too much about college, so someone's going to have to correct me on a lot of this stuff. But. Man, Michigan, Ohio State, there we go. Yeah, you see a lot of big rivalries in, in college sports, that's for sure. Joe Pizzle, what's next? I don't know. Check the schedule. And a green Wander Franco, nice. That is for Tristan and the Rays, 42 out of 99. Tani to 50. Joe Pizzle giving the dust off warning. The dust off alert. Sorry, not a warning, but the dust off alert. Dust off those wanders. Were people letting Wander Franco collect us, Joe Pizzle? I feel like he's always been some of the one of the hotter cards pretty consistently. No one's letting those collect us. Did it? Hmm. So maybe it is time to dust off your Wander Francos. I feel like the dust off alert would be for like if Brendan McKay was raking in spring training, Joe Pizzle. Then I'd be like, hey, dust off your Brendan McKays. How's Brendan McKay doing? Wander for the Rays, Tristan. There's a Julio Rodriguez base rookie card for Seattle. Daniel with the M's. Hey, uh, Joe Pizzle, what was, uh, I've been breaking all day. What What is, uh, what was Durant's line today? How many minutes did he play? What, what, what did he do? Here's Zach Pop. 30 out of 50. That'd be InSync's best album. Max Muncy blue to 75. Mark's all in on Wander. Stuff is a bit of low at the moment, but been getting much of it as possible. I think it'll be the best of the class. 23. Uh, Joe Pizzle was here yesterday. He was asking me, Joe, what do you think? 25 points over or under? And we both agreed under. We thought minutes restriction, and we thought, you know, knock a little rust off. But 27 minutes, 23 points. Oliver's saying the album before Pop was NSYNC's best album. <laughs> Oliver, I, I do like how, I do appreciate how you, uh, how, how you uh, typed out NSYNC properly with the, with the star in front of NSYNC. That was very good. It was very good Associated Press style. The style guy would be proud of you. Shot 50% from three, jeez. Was it Celebrity that had pop on it? Yeah, Celebrity had pop on it. No, oh, you were saying No Strings Attached was better. Mm, all right. That had Bye Bye Bye, It's Gonna Be Me, uh, that's all I remember from that. Uh, 
Diego saying Booker with an easy 37. That's stupid. That celebrity had had a pop and girlfriend. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Maybe no strings attached is better. We're a couple months away from it's gonna be May. <laughs> a couple months away from that. Can't wait for May 1st. So I can dust off that uh, that old chestnut. That, that F1's not done yet? Hmm. Thought they'd be done by now. Yeah, big deal. Big deal, Joe P. You know, Austin Reeves almost went perfect, too, today. So how about that? You better watch out for the Lakers. Austin Reeves, 25 minutes, 5 for 5 from field goal, 1 for 1 from 3, 8 from 9 from the free throw, th from the charity stripe, 4 assists and a steal. Ooh, you better watch out for AR-15. Although he doesn't like that nickname anymore. You better watch out. You know, New Look Lakers beat the Oklahoma City Thunder 123 to 117. I'm pretty sure the Thunder are a better team than the Charlotte Hornets. No D'Angelo Russell, no LeBron, no Anthony Davis. Dub. Watch out. Watch out. Here come the Lakers. No AD, no LeBron, no problem. That's right. Austin Reeves, the white, the white Mamba, the hillbilly Kobe, as he's been referred to. He's a golfer. He likes the golf as well. Apparently he's pretty good at it. Oliver, have you heard about this? Watch out for the Lakers. It's Cole Calhoun to 50. And Trevor Rogers to 75 for the fish. Are the Suns Lakers playing each other soon, Joe Pizzle? I think, do they play twice? I think at least, at least once. There's to 75. Yeah, if you ever watch like post game shows where Austin Reeves is on, they'll uh, they'll uh, sometimes Mike Trudell will drop a golf reference every once in a while. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not getting cocky, Rex. Pizzle might be getting a little cocky. I'm 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 frankly stunned that Lakers are able to beat the uh, Thunder today. Every little thing I do. Do 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 do. Hey Joe, did you watch that crazy finish last weekend where Taylor hits that three with like a minute sec or a second left, and then it's like one point something, and then Joel and B throws it up. Yeah, that seventy footer. But he fucking did it. But it was just like, but it was like it was like bang, it was like left and bang. Yeah. And imagine if you would have been lit up, that would have been insane. We were watching dinner, we're like, holy shit. Yeah, I was like, what? I was like, oh shit, you made it. And like, people ran out there like they thought he did. Yeah. Well, in real, in real fast motion. In real time, it almost looked like it. It's gonna be May. There's Spencer Torkelson die cut. I'm losing it, folks. Stephen Carney and the Tigers. Kyle Schroeder, Red Sox edition. And Julio, Julio Rodriguez, in the late 80s design, Daniel with the M's.
There's Patrick Wisdom. It's a smart hit going to the Cubbies. Evan, it's a 25. Stephen Carney has the Red Sox. Gets the short run. There's Trevor Larnock. And there you go, gang. We made it. We made it to the end of Ben Baller. Here's a recap of some of the stuff that we got. And one of these Julios are numbered. No, not that one. This one. That's pretty cool. Oh, sorry, Rex. We should have said earmuffs. There's Bryson Stott autograph. And there you go, boys and girls. Thank you very much for getting in on it. More Ben Baller in the store. Check it out, jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'm Joe, and I'll see you next time for the next one. Bye-bye.